Welcome to Drunk on Social, the symposium, where we help you stay ahead of social media trends, share the latest news, and highlight the strategies that are working to help you grow your business. Now let's join our hosts, Tristan and Jeff, in three, two, one. Are you struggling to set yourself apart in the real estate sea of sameness? Do you struggle to decide where to market, how to market, or what to put into your marketing to help you stand out? It's probably because your brand isn't dialed in. A great brand involves a lot more than a photo, a logo, and a tagline, friends. That's because people don't do business with a logo. They do business with a person. Our friends at Brandface can help you define, develop, and display your personal brand so you can stand out, outmarket, and outsell your competition. It is time to unveil your inner star. Head to powerbrandtraining.com and check out their free training video. Again, powerbrandtraining.com. That's all one word powerbrandtraining.com. Check out their free training video. It will be worth your time. Starting the recording. And let's just get everybody on here. I'm going to invite Jeff and then we'll get going live. This just, this feels, I did one earlier today. It feels exactly like uh, Clubhouse, if you were on Clubhouse for a while, you know how it feels. I see a few of you on already. And let me grab. And I'll invite you to speak. There we go. And I'm waiting in for. For Jeff, as I'm waiting for Jeff, we're going to go talk about TikTok strategies for your business. Obviously, Jeff and I are in it, TikTok. We're very excited to be using it. We think it's the platform of the now. It's it's growing super fast. Uh, let me tell Jeff that he should be on. He should have it. Uh, open up your room, Jeff. Open up the room, and then we'll get going. All right, so we're going to go for about 30 minutes on here, and it's all going to be about TikTok, and we're going to outline what you need to do, how we're using it, what trends we're using or what trends we're seeing in regards to TikTok. And it will take some questions, probably about 20, 24, 25 minutes in. So there is a question section at the bottom. There's also a comment section. And if you can see that, you can comment there. And if you hold down on the thumb, you're going to see different options. You're going to have the thumbs up, the heart, the laugh, all those little emojis on there. You want to test that out. I see that as well. All right, let's get started. We'll bring in Jeff as we are here because I don't see him on it, but I don't want to delay it either. And if you see Jeff, just bring him on here. Um, Here we go. So over the last two years, we've seen the rise of short video and everyone is, every big outlet that's for social media to turn a copy, TikTok. We've got YouTube Shorts, we've got Instagram Reels, we've got Facebook Reels, and we also have LinkedIn giving the ability for creators to start growing there, even though they're focused primarily on professional networking. What I want to talk about, though, is how you can be using TikTok to create something there on your phone, upload it to TikTok, and then also... Be able to use it on YouTube Shorts, be able to use it on Instagram, and also Facebook. So here's here's the idea behind it. I want you to start thinking when it comes to TikTok, when it comes to anything social media, I want you to think of the niches that, that you can gravitate to. And it's hard because I know that when I say, hey, guys, you, you should have some niches. You should have pillars, right? When we talk to London Lazarson, who has 8 million followers on TikTok, he says you should have three pillars. I'm going to extend it to you should have four pillars. 
And you should alternate between these four until you find your groove. And these are the four, if you've been following us for a while, the four that I always say, and you can write these down, are S-T-A-Y, it's sell with a story, teach, give advice on something that you love, a hobby, and talk about you. So that's that's how you start doing it. You go in deeper, right? Again, it's sell with a story, teach on what you love, on what, you, what you're great at, right? Your business. And then you give advice on your hobbies, on your passion, and then you talk about you. Once you start doing that routinely and you're doing one TikTok a day, so I'm challenging you to do one TikTok a day. That's the challenge because a lot of us are like, well, I'm barely even using social media, but but then you also talk about how you want to be where the consumer is. Just do yourself a favor. Google the most visited websites in the world. It's Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And TikTok's on the rise. It, last time I checked, it was number 18, 17, going up the ladder fast. So if you really want to meet the consumers where they're at, you're going to be paying attention to where social media is heading. And where we're at right now is short video. And obviously, four out of the top five sites in the world are social media. So you need to be on here. And the reason I'm talking about TikTok is that's where social media starts first right now in the world we live in. And then it goes out everywhere else. A lot of the short videos that you see have the TikTok logos on there. So here's how you do it. I need you to, if if you're new to TikTok, even if you're old, you're going to have to do this. And that's, you're going to have to take some time to do research. I typically do mine in the mornings. Uh, I typically do mine in the late, late afternoon, maybe early evenings, where I go in and I take a look at, well, let's open up TikTok and let's see what people are posting. And, and TikTok is so great at their algorithm that they're putting me, uh, putting me in front of people that I would love. And a lot of those are business owners. And so I'm looking at everything and I'm like, wow, this is, this is a great idea. This is a great idea. And that's my research time. So I'm going in and I'm looking at everyone who's posting and I'm saying that I'm going to save. And you have the ability to favorite things on here and create these little playlists so you can go back to them and like, I saved this song because it's trending or I saved this idea because it inspired me to do something similar. And that that research phase, that time spent on TikTok, whether it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that really allows you to be able to understand what's possible. And a lot of us don't do that. A lot of us just kind of stop and say, well, that's just, this is just not for me. Well, as things come out, whatever is next, if that next thing isn't for you, like the Oculus that you need to go buy, if the metaverse isn't for you, then you're just going to be left behind. Because even though the core of everything we do is the relationships is the core and community is the core. The route in which we get there changes. We just have to pay attention. We can reach more people if we're using the tools around us. And those tools, the tool that we have right now, the one that you need to gravitate to and use more is TikTok. And so part of that is research. Find the trending songs that people are using. Find the way in which people are using TikTok. Find your favorite people that you gravitate to. You know what? You know what? Like, for example, Glenda, Glenda Baker, you want to follow her. I look at Glenda and I'm like, damn, that's a good one. I like her style. I can do that. I'm going to replicate something similar and add my twist to it. And then I go to, let's say, Brad or Brad McCallum or Ken Posick or CC Underwood, Alana Rodriguez or Jeff Fitzer, who I have no idea why he's not on here, but Jeff Fitzer. And I'm like, damn, I like that. And then I share it with them and then they share stuff with me. And so then, then I'm like, okay, now that I've done my research, now, now I'm able to go in and start actually attempting to post. 
And are you going to mess up? And is some of your stuff never going to get any traction? Of course. It's social media. Some of the stuff I post gets no traction at all. But some does. And so your job is to start setting aside the time to actually do this. Because we go back to what I said at the beginning, which was we go to the word, we go to where the consumer is. This is where the consumer is. We have no excuse. Now that we know that, now we have to make an effort to block time and put this into our schedule to sit down and do this. So I do it in two ways. I have one whole section of time that I block out where I sit down and I Google because I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in real estate. So then I Google most asked questions for buyers, most asked questions for sellers and so forth on Google. And guess what pops up? A whole bunch of information on questions asked when people are looking to buy a home or sell a home. And I go through it and I read. I'm like, that's a good, that's a good title. I can riff off of that because I have 17 years experience in real estate, right? Now I look and I'm like, I can totally make a TikTok on that for a minute, two minutes or three minutes. The max is three. I typically keep it to under a minute because then I can repurpose it for Instagram, YouTube shorts, not Facebook. Facebook is only 30 seconds, Facebook reels. So now that I have a title, I'm like, what's next? And so I create 20, 30 topics during my research phase on Google. And then I write them down on a piece of paper or I put them on a Google Doc. And now I sit in front of a camera, whether it's your phone camera or an actual camera. And you just riff off of it. Let's say one of them was, and you can Google this with me right now if you want, but Google uh, top questions that buyers for real estate have. And you'll see. And you can pick one of them and saying, well, how long are home inspections or how long, how, how long is the purchase process? It could be that simple. And then you start off with a hook. And you've got to practice a few times. But remember, this is being recorded. It's not live. So you can screw up 20 times. So as you have the camera sitting in front of you, you click record. If you have the new iPhone or you have the new Android, it gives you the option to do the cinematic view. You click on that. So it kind of blurs out the background because you want higher quality video. Now you click record and you're like, some people think it, you, know, you, you can even start with the story. You can say, hey, the shortest closing I've ever had, and it's me personally, is five days. But most last 30 days, and you can go into the story. Ten years ago, I had this all-cash buyer who called me from an online lead and said, hey, I really like this home, and so forth, and so forth, and I closed. The idea is to hook people and to create a pattern that you're doing this consistently. And the only way to do this, even from influencers, like I mentioned, London, he says on Tuesdays, I'm sitting down and I'm creating content. I record everything. I don't want to have to shoot this every day, Tristan. Do I get inspired maybe every day and I'll shoot a little bit here and there? Sure. But that I'm doing for fun. If I'm going to treat this like a business, I'm going to block some time to do this. And I'm going to block some time to do this on Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Or 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Part of that is research and the other one's shooting. And he has a team that edits, so it's easy. If you don't have an editing team, then you have to edit. But that's fine because the world we live in right now, it makes it a lot easier. You can do it on your phone. If you're looking for a great app, one app that I love is Viva Video. I use that, I use that daily multiple times. And you just put all the videos that you shoot together and it, it pieces them together. You can edit on the go and it's, it's just super clean. And it's Viva, V-I-V-A, video, V-I-D-E-O. And there's a paid version of it so you can remove the little logo on the, on the bottom right so it doesn't say Viva video. So I would recommend that you do that. Now, the other part to this is as you're scheduling the time, block time to create the content and to edit, now you have to decide, well, how often am I going to be posting to TikTok? And I would recommend that you do it one time, at least one time a day. But Tristan, that's like 30 times. A Look, you have an opportunity here to create a massive audience. You have an opportunity here to 
to use something that's free to bring you business. Use it. The world that we live in allows us to use all these tools for free, but, but we still decide to do things the hard way. Now, Facebook's free for the most part. YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I mean, we went over the top five most visited websites in the world, right? So I think here, here's where you have to turn it around and say, got it. I, I'm going to commit to doing it this many times a month. So Jeff and I, for this whole year, we've committed to doing 100 videos minimum a month. That's going to be 1,200 a year. And right now we're on the mark, but it's only day 10, right? So will we achieve it? I think so, right? We have a good groove. We have a good system, but we're doing it for two reasons. And these are the reasons you've got to do it too. One, it's forcing us to be really uncomfortable, to be able to look at what we're doing and saying, wow, do we feel uncomfortable? Because we know that when we're uncomfortable, we know we're growing. We want to challenge ourselves daily because the last thing we want to do is settle. The moment you settle is the moment you're just not growing. So number one, on social media, we like to push the boundaries in the sense that we want to achieve more so that we can push ourselves to grow. That's number one. Number two, once we've done this, because we've done this in the past, where we had September be 100 videos in a month, we did 100 plus. We can look back at the content that people engaged with the most. And when we do that, we can see what type of content we should be producing based on that. But a lot of us, the thing is a lot of us only post maybe five videos in a year. And we can't really determine what type of videos are picking are being picked up by the algorithm to show to people. Whether they got a lot of comments or they got a lot of views. What are the reactions? We don't know. We don't have enough. This is why I need you to be using more short video content and do a lot more of it in a month. You can go back to it and then decide, got it. I know what my niches are going to be. A lot of people gravitated to me when I was talking about my hobby, whatever my passion was. Or a lot of people loved that I was teaching about this specific thing about my business. Right? That's what I want you to do. That's the key to this. And you got to find the time that fits for you. And some people are like, well, I don't want to talk about my personal life. Great, don't. Talk about your business. Some people are like, well, I don't want to talk about business so much. I want to talk about personal. Great, do that. The point is, you need to do something. Jeff's not here, but Jeff usually says, Jeff typically says something like, you know, my, your non-existent video will outperform my crappy video. And it's true, obviously, right? The point is that he's getting something done, right? And you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to consistently do that. So there are other parts to this. Now, let's say you've got all your videos ready to go and you're posting it up, it's a minute, two minutes, three minutes, whatever you want. I suggest a minute or under so you can repurpose it to YouTube and Instagram. Let's say it's a minute or under. Now you have the option to choose some music and I would recommend that you use trending music. You have the ability in TikTok to lower the music so low that it's almost not hearable. And that's where I want it. You're using the trending music, very low, and then it allows you to talk and it allows the listener to listen to you. But you're capitalizing on the trending music. Along with the captioning, if you've got something important to say, most people still listen to stuff while they're at work or while they're at school or while they're wherever, where they can't usually listen to it with sound. So the captioning is important too. This is why TikTok automatically captions on the right-hand side There's a little button that says caption. So caption it. And then once that's done, then you have options. What's the heading? I need a, I need a solid title. Here's why I need a solid title because Google announced three months ago that they're going to index TikTok videos and Instagram videos. That means they're going to be searchable on Google. So your titles need to be really good. And then I need you to hashtag because that's also searchable. 
and make it relevant. Don't don't make it like those videos that's that hashtag Kim Kardashian and that Kim Kim's not nowhere in the video. Right. We don't want to bait people into watching the, the wrong type of videos. So have a great title. Have a great hashtag. And then allow TikTok to be able to do edit with other people and share it and all those. Those those are usually toggled green. So that's fine. And then change the cover photo so that it's not just whatever photo pops up there. Make it a photo that's more engaging because what happens is as people gravitate to you and watch your first video and they're like, who is this person? And they click on your profile. Then they're able to see all the other videos you have. And then they can see, oh, if they can't tell what other videos are there because you never, you didn't take the time to use the right picture on there, then they won't know. You can also, you can also put a heading on those inside of the, the picture with the right wording or graphic, whatever you want. I know Jeff does a great job. You can take a look at Jeff's uh, TikTok uh, handle. I think it's just his name, Jeff Fitzer. And then you can take a look at mine so you can see the difference. Um, but we both had we both had videos that go viral on there. So the idea behind it is to get consistent, to post relevant content to the audience that you want to attract, and and to continue to test. Because if you don't, and you don't do this consistently, you're going to miss this boat. You're going to miss the next boat, and you're going to keep on missing boats, and you're going to keep on bitching and saying, "Hey, why?" Why haven't I been able to do, oh, I just can't get on this. It's not for me. And you make up excuses. So here's your opportunity to jump on TikTok. I need you to outline it. If you can't figure it out, use the calendar that we have, which goes between sell with a story, teach, give advice on a passion or a hobby, and then talk about you. And do a lot more video. Look at my, if you want to look at my Instagram right now, because I repurpose everything to Instagram and Facebook. If you want to look at my Instagram, which is my name, you can see most of it, like 90% of it is video. They're all reels. Because I know they're performing so well. And that's where I want you to be. I want you to challenge yourself to say, hey, I'm going to do these short videos. I don't care if they're terrible. And some of my videos, my, my children are like, that's cringy, dad. And I'm like, oh, well, that's life. Um, but some of them are great. All right, we're at 223. Let's go to questions. You can check at the bottom. There's a little comment section. Or you could just raise your hand. I think you could raise your hand. I'll bring you up here. And you can answer. You can ask the question live on here with me. And then I'll take you back to the audience. Any questions, any comments, any concerns? Anybody want to add anything? I'm looking it up on, on our, on our uh, Facebook page as well. I love this, by the way. I love this feature. If you guys haven't tried it for your business, you should definitely try it. It's, it's very, very similar to Clubhouse. All right. I get, uh, here's some questions. Can't find Jeff Fitzer. Uh, it's his name, Jeff Fitzer. And it's with a P, P-F, P-F-I. So P-F-I, I know it's a tricky name. Jeff Fitzer, you can you can get mad at him later for that. And then mine is just my name, Tristan Almada, Tristan dot Almada. And then, do I use any special equipment? You know, I I have special equipment, and I do use it, but mostly I'm just using my phone. Over the last ten days, I've used primarily my phone. You can go to my TikTok and see. I do turn on the cinematic view on most of the videos that I use. And it gives that, um, it's called bo- Boca in the background. It kind of blurs it out. So take a look at that. And then I use a simple tripod, tripod by Joby, J-O-B-Y. And that's that's the, that's as techy as I get with some of this stuff. I, but I do have amazing tech that I don't use quite often. So great question. And how do I, how do you identify and save trending music? You do some research and as you're watching the videos, you can see what music they're using. And if it keeps on popping up and it's got like millions of views or thousands of views, you're able to see, oh, you know what? This one, I understand. This song is trending and it's attached to this specific type of video, right? So definitely do that. And in 
Can you type Jeff Fitzer and my Instagram and TikTok handle inside of the Facebook group? Because I see the question popping up in there. And then I've got somebody here. Claudia, what's up, Claudia? I'm bringing you on here. All right, Claudia, let's see if this, let's see if this works. Let me know. I'll let you know when I see you up here. And then you can ask your question. There you are, Claudia. Hey, Tristan. What's up? <laughs> I'm here trying to get everything I can about TikTok. Good. This is my year. <laughs> it is your year. I'm watching your stuff, so good job. I'm trying. I'm trying. But one of my, my biggest question is the cross-referencing between business and personal. All right. I know everyone wants to listen to the personal as well, but sometimes I cringe sometimes when I feel like maybe that's too personal. Yeah, I think I think that just depends on on you, specifically the people that are so if you're listening in, think of how comfortable are you with with getting too personal or do you want to get that personal? And for me, you notice a lot of the stuff that I do isn't really, really personal, Claudia. Right. I just don't feel comfortable there. I don't. And as as comfortable as I feel with the personal, probably the most com- the deepest I've gone is the story I told about my mom over the weekend. And that's probably the most personal I've ever gotten, which there's nothing wrong with that because I've also had millions of views on other stuff, right? <laughs> so, I would say I leave that up to you, but here's one part on the business part when you're looking at personal and business. Right. If you're going to go personal and you're going to talk about business in the personal account, I need it to alternate. I can't. Yes. I, I need it. And if you're going to talk only business, that's okay. As long as it has a story, because the story is what's going to grip me. The story is what's going to keep on keeping me coming back to you because I identify with the stories because you're adding feeling to it. You're giving me facts and you're making it fun, Right. You're, you're making uh-huh. me come back because look, look at, look at our history just as a human race. We we're attracted to, to religion because of the stories and the hope that it has. Right. And then right. we watch movies on Netflix because they're story related everywhere we go, where we do a lot of, uh-huh. there was a story behind it and you need to, you need to function in the same way. So whenever you see that something does really well and it, and it can serve as a lesson for somebody else i might add that to your business part if you if let's say you did a great personal one and you're like you know what that that could be good for my business page i would throw it on there um but it's a it's a balancing act and claudia you're not gonna know what your audience wants until you go super deep into it this is why i want you to do one a day right and i i have to tell you that i Listen to that video that you did about your mom. And then I was, you know, I, I was listening to, um, I guess it was uh, something that you said on the podcast for Brilliant Thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God, I just proved exactly what he said. So you caught me on the feeling on the personal stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, I was connecting. And just because I went and I followed you, I mean, I already follow you, but this is the connection that I couldn't make before. You said something that really caught my feelings. And then I'm in your page, and then I want to look at more. What else are you doing? That's the key right there. That's, yes. I- <laughs> such a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because that's what we need to be. That's what we need to be doing. We need to duplicate that. Yes. So, I, that was the, that's the best example. So thank you. I mean, that really brought it home to me. Such a good point, Claudia. Well, I'm also watching what you're doing. So keep up the good work. I want to challenge you to just do more of it. But okay, in, in order to be able to do more, remember that it can't be as sporadic. Even remember, even London, who has over 8 million followers on TikTok, says, I set a time for it and I time block it. Yes. So make sure if you want to do this consistency consistently, you've, mm-hmm. you've got to set, I would say two hours a week. That's it. To create the content. Two hours a week. One for research, yeah, w- one for shooting. Okay. Then the research, because sometimes I'm like, what else am I going to talk about? Or, you know, and it doesn't have to be so elaborate and they don't have to be so long, which that just makes it easier at this point. 
You got it. That's it. Okay, thanks. Great job, Claudia. Thanks for jumping on. Awesome. Thank you. All right, everybody. If nobody has any other questions, comments, I have went through all the questions. I think I'm in the group checking them out. Got them all. If you're looking for our handles, we've got Jeff's handle on there and my handle on there in the group. So you can take a look at there. And then we're going to see if we can do this more routinely just to uh, test this out. We're always testing things out. So Claudia, Robin, Sarah, in Melanie, Carrie, Daniel, uh, and, and the other Claudia. I see two Claudias. So thank you for being on. Appreciate all of you. Have an awesome day, everyone. Thanks for listening to Drunk on Social, the symposium. We are here to help you take your business to new levels through social media. Make sure to subscribe to get updates on new episodes and come join us on our Drunk on Social Facebook page. And as always, make sure you leave us a great review on your favorite podcast app. Feedback and likes are very much appreciated.